some truly beautiful footage here, right? For me, the mesmerizing nature of space is one of the main reasons I enjoy space games so much. Falling Frontier then is off to a fantastic start when it comes to visuals, but it seems the game has so much more going for it, so let's take a look. Homeworld is perhaps one of the best examples of space-based RTS games. It's by no means the only example of an awesome real-time strategy title set within space. Hegemonia, for example, is another fantastic title that I enjoyed immensely back during its early release in the uh, well, the early 2000s, I think, or was it the late 90s? Falling Frontier picks up the reins where those old titles left off and is attempting to move the genre forward in a number of key ways. One of the primary ways of doing this is by adding in typical 4X elements. So for those of you who might be new to 4X titles, they cover the likes of Stellaris and Civilization, essentially grand strategy games. The 4X stands for Expand, Explore, Exterminate and Exploit. Essentially, this means empire building in almost every sense of the word. Falling Frontier, of course, isn't a grand strategy title, it's not a 4X title, but it is, first and foremost, an RTS title. The important thing to note here, then, is and its borrowing elements from the grand strategy genre. An example of this is maintaining supply lines for your budded empire, but I'm getting ahead of myself here, let's start at the beginning. You begin the game at a freshly constructed orbital platform in a newly discovered star system. The star system is fully fleshed out with planets, moons, asteroids and a small nebula. It's all procedurally generated, which means each playthrough should be different. And as you can see from the footage, it also looks stunning. Now, taking control of a select lineage, descendants of various factions from humanity's home in the solar system, you can choose your history from among Terra, Venus, Mercury and many others of the acidic, uh, significant bodies within the solar system. With your newly constructed orbital platform, it's your job to expand your budded empire across the procedurally generated star system and compete against the other lineages for the other worlds. So this is where some of those 4X elements come in that I mentioned a moment ago. A big part of the game will be keeping your fleets supplied. Falling Frontier seems to avoid the old RTS trope of zerging with hundreds of ships under your control. Instead, each ship is its own powerhouse with a full crew and resource requirements. It's important then to ensure your ships have the much needed resources on board to maintain ammo, fuel and even food for the crew. Supply lines then need to be built and losing a supply line can mean disaster for your fleets. This means that logistics are a vital part of playing Falling Frontier. The Steam page talks about weak opponents taking on larger opponents through the use of guerrilla warfare and raiding supply depots and refineries. Intel, of course, will naturally play a part in this, and as such, players will be able to deploy probes across star systems, and these come with both risks and rewards. It's interesting to hear that larger forces won't be able to combine all of their ships into a single large force, and this removes the element of Zergin, which has often been the traditional method to overpower an enemy in RTS titles. Combat seems to be interesting too. The videos show it to be quite tactical with using planets and other objects to obscure the enemy's view and keep hidden and take advantage of various objects around the solar system. Meanwhile, the weapons of fire feels suitably powerful, but also somewhat dynamic as weapons can misfire and ricochet. Could these potentially cause unintentional damage to other targets? A curious thought. Now, Falling Frontier was going to initially release as a skirmish title. That's recently changed as it will now launch with a campaign mode in addition to the skirmish mode. There's also going to be some modding tools available that should help players create their own missions, uh, for want of a better term. Falling Frontier then was going to release into early access in June, but has now been scheduled for release in late 2021. And after all that, perhaps the most amazing part about all of this the entire game has been developed by a single person. Pretty impressive, right? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.